Hi everyone, Dr. Ruby from Pain Cream to the Posture Size. Today, as per one of our viewers requests, we're going to be going over how to use the hip thrust exercise to benefit low back spondylolisthesis. Hope you enjoy. So the hip thrust exercise, which is done on a bench or with a machine, lifting the hips up by engaging the glutes and coming back down can be done with a bar or a machine pad cable resistance bands or even dumbbells on your hips or free weight it can be done with two legs or even one leg at a time but how do we do hip thrusts for the glutes and the posterior chain to benefit us with spinal anesthesis without hurting ourselves well keep in mind a couple of key elements of spinal anesthesis number one Many times spondylolisthesis is aggravated with low back extension or an overarching of the back. So in a hip thrust, as we come up, if we go past the flat neutral position and try to hyperextend the hip joint, that's going to be much more likely to overarch the back. So the first tip when doing hip thrust is to stop the motion just before or at a level area with the pelvis and the abdomen. Second, as we come up, we're going to be using glutes as our prime target, but also the hamstrings and the erector spinae muscles at the back are going to be contributing to this motion. Now, most people with spondylo, because of an anterior pelvis, which many of us have with spondylolisthesis, have a tendency to have already hyperworking or overworking hamstring muscles as they're trying to tense to control that anterior pelvic tilt. So, as we come up, the hamstrings are going to be much more likely than the glutes to participate in this exercise. They're already overloaded. So to take the hamstrings out and better target the glutes, we want to isometrically push the foot long, as if we're trying to straighten the foot or slide it across the ground. As we do that, especially on the weaker side of our glute, and of course, if you don't know what your weak side glute is, go to the Pain-Free and Fitter Posture Size website. We have a free body analysis. Check out your body mechanics. Learn how to exercise and tailor fit exercises to your particular mechanics so you can use corrective exercises instead of strengthening dysfunction. Using a weak glute, we're going to push that side of the foot further or with more tension than the other side. That's going to initiate some quadricep or thigh muscle contraction, which is going to inhibit the hamstring, which is usually over contracting on that side, and allow us to better target the glute as we come up from the bottom. So right from the bottom position, you're going to try to push that foot long, which you'll feel your thigh tensing on that weak glute side a little bit more on the front, it will relax the hamstring and help you contract or get the glutes, which you want. Because again, the glute is the main driver of hip extension. It's going to help us with any type of lower back pain related to faulty hip extension or posterior chain weakness. The other problem with spinal anesthesis is an over-tightening of the erector spinae, those back muscles. Now, we've talked before about erector spinae usage. The good part about the erector spinae is the lower fibers can be used to exert a backwards pull or checking type contraction on L4 and L5 if it's associated with tailbone under or flattening the lower back, meaning tilting the pelvis so your pubic bone is coming towards your chin and your tail is going under between your legs. If you hold that tension, not extra movement as you come up in the hip thrust, that's going to allow you, when you are using your erector spinae muscles, to exert that posterior or backward slide as opposed to just the extension force which will happen in those erector spinae muscles overarching your lower back as you come up. So these are the two tips to keep in mind. You want to really activate glutes with this exercise, and the way you do it is by pushing the foot long to inhibit the hamstrings, engaging the quads. That'll help you better to target your glute muscles, and emphasizing tailbone under a posterior pelvic tilt the higher you go in terms of tension. Once you've already set the proper amount of tailbone under a tailbone up to increase or decrease the curve in your back to your neutral spine. And again, if you don't know what that is, you need a body analysis to figure out how to determine what your unique neutral spine is for your body. Once you get your neutral spine set and all your other corrections, you just want to maintain the tension as you come up with that posterior pelvic tilt. You don't need to tilt it more, flatten the back more. You don't need to bring the pubic bone further up towards your chin, but you need to maintain that tension as if someone's trying to arch your lower back by pushing your pubic bone down and your tailbone up towards your shoulder blades as you resist that with a lot of abdominal tension, 
pulling the pubic bone up. If you enjoy this exercise on hip thrusting for spondylolisthesis, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there for rehabbing spondylo. Looking for a custom program to correct your unique body mechanics, get you back into shape, and take you step by step through the parts that are necessary to rehab your spondylolisthesis and get you active again without pain, check out our fast track program for spondylolisthesis at the painfreeandfit.com website. Questions or comments, write in. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video on hip thrusting and lower back spondylolisthesis.